Hi this is Chris, welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be looking at the very basics of Active Inspire, the latest version of the interactive whiteboard software from Promethean. You may already be used to using Active Primary or Active Studio. Well Active Inspire replaces both of these software titles. It works in a very similar way and should be fairly easy to pick up. When the software launches we're presented with the dashboard. From here we can create a new flip chart. Now here we're seeing the first major difference between Active Inspire and Active Primary for example. It's possible to have more than one flip chart file open at a time. Now this is really useful as it means at the beginning of the day you can load up all of your flip chart files for all the lessons you're going to teach. You then simply click on the file you're going to use for each lesson. However I only want to use one flip chart file for the time being so I'm going to click here to close the other file and then I'll click close on my dashboard to start building my flip chart. Now the first thing I'm going to add is some text. So I click on my text icon here and you'll notice that we have a new text formatting tool that appears at the bottom of my screen. I can use this to change the font, the size or the style of my text but I'm happy with it at the moment so I'm going to leave it as it is. Then what I have to do is to click on my page where I'd like my text to appear. So because I'm going to add a title I'm going to click in the middle at the top of my page. I'm going to enter the title grid multiplication and I'd like to change the formatting style of this text. So what I have to do first is to select all the text I'd like to change the formatting for and then go down to the formatting toolbar at the bottom where I can underline it and change the size using these up and down arrows. Once I'm happy with the formatting of my text I'm going to come out of text edit mode by clicking on the arrow which will allow me to drag my text box to wherever I'd like on the screen. Let me show you another way we can actually edit the size of this text. To go back into edit mode I'm going to double click on my text box select the text I'd like to resize and this time I'm going to choose a font size from the drop down list. Now you can see with this larger font my text no longer fits on one line so what I have to do is to resize my text box making it wide enough to accept both words on the single line. To do this I need to click and drag on this button until both words will fit. I'm going to add another text box now this time for a learning objective for my lesson. So I'll click on my page where I'd like my learning objective to go and then type it in. Now as you can see I need to reformat this text slightly. I'm going to select the actual learning objective and turn off the underline feature for that text. I'm also going to resize my whole learning objective making it a lot smaller. I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. Rather than using the up and down arrows or the font size picker I'm instead going to go onto my arrow tool and select the text box. Then you'll see we have a series of buttons that allow me to manipulate how that text box appears on my page. I could for example click here to rotate the box or by clicking this arrow I can make it larger or this arrow will make it smaller. So I'm going to keep clicking the down arrow to keep making my text smaller. Finally I'd like to change the colour of my text so I double click on my text object, select the text and then I'm going to choose blue from the colour picker at the bottom of my page. The last step is to resize my text box making it a little bit narrower so my learning objective stretches further down the page. The next tool to look at is the pen tool. When we select the pen tool our pen toolbar appears at the bottom of the page. This is broken up into three sections, highlighters, pens and rubbers. Let's start by looking at the highlighters. I've got three different thicknesses I can use ranging from very thin to very thick. Now the difference between highlighters and pens is that highlighters allow us to see objects behind the ink so we can highlight some text and still see the words behind it. However it's worth remembering that if you keep highlighting the same word it will eventually disappear. We can also change the colour of the highlighter pen by choosing a colour from the colour picker. The highlighter is a really useful tool to use at the board in front of the class as it allows you to identify key facts to help the children in their learning. Let's take a look at pens now. There are a range of different thicknesses that can be used ranging from very thin to very thick. Clicking on the different pens selects the different thicknesses. To change the colour all we have to do is click on a pen and then pick a colour from the colour picker. The final tool we have available with the pen is our rubbers or erasers. Again we've got different thicknesses available ranging from very thin to very thick. Now it's important to remember that rubbers will only rub out anything that's been added to the page with the pen. So you can see here it's not rubbing out my text because that wasn't drawn onto the screen. So it'll only rub out annotations. This can in fact be quite a useful feature. You could for example use a pen tool to hide a secret word and then use the rubber to rub out the pen revealing the word. A useful feature we can use with our pens is the pen modifier tool. 
To access this, I'm going to select a pen, although I could use a highlighter, and then click this up arrow. What you see now are different preset shapes that I could draw with my pen. So for example, I could draw a perfectly straight horizontal line. Great for doing number lines. Or an oval, perhaps for doing a mind map. Or even a callout label for annotating diagrams. So that's how we can use the pen tool with our flip chart pages. Now my page is looking quite messy now, so I'd like to clear some of the objects away. To do this, I'm going to click on the spray icon, which will reveal the different options available to me. I'm going to start by clicking on clear page. As you can see, what this does is it gets rid of absolutely everything. Any annotations, any text, any shapes, anything that's been added to my page. Now I didn't really want to do that, so I'm going to click the undo button here, which will return my page back to how it was. It's worth remembering that the undo button can be used at any time to correct any mistakes that you may have made. Let's have a look at the other clear options available to me. This time I'm going to try clear objects. Now as you can see, what this has done is it's removed the text from my page, leaving everything that I added with my pen still intact. The clear objects button can be used to remove any text or images from the page, basically anything that isn't an annotation. I'm going to click the undo button again just to undo that change, and then I'm going to click the clear annotations button. As you can see, what this does is it gets rid of everything from the page that was added with the pen tool. This is the clear option that I use most of the time as it kind of returns my page back to its starting point. So that's how we can use the clear option to remove certain objects from our page. But how can we actually keep our pages organised? Well, clicking this button will reveal the page browser. As you can see, I've only got one page in this flip chart file, but I can duplicate it from the page browser. By clicking the button in the corner of the page, I can choose duplicate, or I could use the keyboard shortcut Control D, or on an Apple Mac, Apple D. As you can see, I've now duplicated my page, and I've got three copies of that page to use in my lesson. To select and open a page, all I have to do is click on it. So you can see I've now opened page two of three. I'm going to go ahead and add some text to pages two and three, and then I'll show you how we can use the page browser to actually manipulate the order of my pages. So as you can see, I've now added some text to pages two and three, but let's say I've decided that actually page three would be better in the position of page two. To change the order, all I have to do is click and drag page three until the marker is between pages one and two. Letting go will then reposition this page as page two. Finally, to change between pages without using the page browser tool, we can use the forward and back page buttons on the main toolbar. The last thing we want to do in this basic introduction is to learn how to save and open our flip chart pages. To save a flip chart file, you need to go to File, Save As, and then give your file a suitable name. Now by default, it wants us to save this in the folder My Flip Charts. This is a special place for storing your own flip chart files for all your lessons. Alternatively, you could click the drop down list and select an alternative location, maybe a network drive or a pen drive, but I'm going to save it in the My Flip Charts folder. To save the file, I then click on Save. Opening files is just as easy, but before I can open this file up, I first need to close it, and I do that by clicking on the cross next to the name. To open the flip chart file, I then click on the file menu and select Open. I then select the file I'd like to use and click on Open. So there we go, a brief introduction on Active Inspire, the latest interactive whiteboard software from Prometheum. Thanks very much for watching.